Welcome to the Vibrant Living Network. Have you ever wondered what is possible beyond possible? What is the thing you've been wondering and inquiring about? Are you just feeling stuck and don't know why? Are you thinking or are you seeing? Seeing allows us to expand and have this other experience. We want to invite you for that wake-up call. We want to invite your spirit, your soul, so to be more alive, more connected. Glenn Brooks has been a life coach for over 33 years, author of Divorced to Patterns, Not Each Other, an explorer of what is possible. He has worked with people all around the world. Join us for a wake-up conversation, a dialogue with you. We will have some of the most interesting contributors. We will be talking to some of the most interesting people and have some of the most resourceful teachers, wisdom-filled people from around the world join us. Share your voice, ask the questions, become free of the known into a new world of possibility. We are going to talk about all the things you wonder about, how to live, how to heal, how to connect, how to love, how to be seen. Your life is precious. Enjoy it. Happy Vibrant New Year. I'm Glenn Brooks. I'm in the sunshine right now. It's quite... When we're in the sunshine or the brightening, I wish you guys... Actually, I wish I recorded something I wanted to share with you guys. I I had this dialogue with Dr. Annie uh, Rosenfarb. And one of the takeaways I wanted to share with you today before I invite our, our vibrant living team to say hello is brightening. Those moments when things seem bright. As one of the things he said to me in relation to when patients come from around the world, they come from around the world to be treated with their eyes. But he made it a point to say that this brightening. And I'm going to get into that because my whole relationship with Dr. Gail Randall, who I'll, I'll introduce first, is around brightening. And I want to explain more and be specific. And then I want to talk to you guys about a film and how I discovered what acting is. And it has nothing to do with acting. All right. Let's go to Dr. Gail Randall, our our general and uh, medical advisor to the show. And some people call her spiritual healer. She ran away from the, her house when she was three to discover the world of horses. She escaped to UCLA, became a professor, and then became a visionary and anthropology healer, helping people go beyond their past and integrate it to a new level of healing and well-being. Dr. Gail Randall. Wow. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you yeah, so much. Yeah, well, yeah. Happy New Year to you. I like the brightening, yeah. lightning, and enlightening, and becoming enlightenment in this new year, the new decade. It is going to be the decade of moving into our authentic, enlightened, brightened self. I love it. I love it so hard. <laughs> <laughs> That's our new T-shirt, by the way. We'll be loving it so hard. We're going to have a Vibrant Living T-shirt. It's going to be a hemp T-shirt. I'll let you guys know about it next week. All right, Sherry the Dog Mystic. She's here. She was born on another planet where she had deeper pour with animals and saw another way to work with animals that has to do with allowing the animal to be the brilliant animal it is, the dog that it is. So that, that suppressing the dog is is a very small part of, of it. It isn't anything to do with genuine dog attunement, dog education. And uh, I met Sherry about almost a year ago, and my vision was to bring this a different conversation around dogs. And uh, when I met the dog mystic, it was a fulfillment of a vision. And here you are today living the vision together. Your forthcoming book is called The Dog Mystic, and I'm being in deep tune with your dog. Happy Vibrant New Year, and here you are. Happy Vibrant New Year. I am <laughs> so grateful, and um, <clears throat> the dog mystic is evolving, and I am looking forward to the forthcoming book of of the dog mystic. To Me, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. Wait, I want to put that chapter in there. Three rot wireless, three healings. <laughs> three wild <laughs> three healing. That was something you said, Dr. Gale. That was that Jerry said to me, oh, we got to speak to this woman because you shared on the show on our format about this woman had three different diseases and three Rottweilers took care one each one took care of one of those diseases. And Sherry says to me, we got to track that down. I was thinking we do. That's great stuff. 
Yes. It's great stuff. It's, it's, it's amazing, and you know, they're they're the animals are here to to heal us. So it's they're magical. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I magical. Yeah. So. Uh, Miss Lisa LaRose, who she, Lisa took the only the only known picture of me hula hooping with three hula hoops. Thank you, Lisa, for being a. Sh- t- I never did that again, by the way. But you 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 walked into the park when I was doing three hula hoops, and uh, we were getting ready to design a show, an ongoing show with you in, in Northern California, the Santa Cruz Market. All right, producer, and uh, what did you say a moment ago? You said it's not boring. Happy Happy Blessed New Year to you. I feel very blessed. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm um, you know, very um, blessed to be connected to so many wonderful people and to really start the new year off in, in a wonderful way, um, you know, talking about brightening and vibrancy. And and uh, I, what I fondly say is 2020 clarity of vision, you know, yeah. what we're yes. going to be a very fortunate year. Yeah. So very, yes. First you know, I see – I. I, I see us having parties. We're going to do a pre-publication party all around the country for the, the Dog Mystic book. And uh, I'm so inspired about that. I'm so inspired about working with Kevin Anderson. Kevin Anderson Associates is going to be behind the book, and he's amazing. Oh, I don't want to – you know, before, actually, I wanted to talk about being a vibrant speaker. And I wanted to say um, it's very different than what people think. We had a meeting last night with Janet Carafa around our event at Carnegie Hall. Now it looks like it's going to be two events. We're going to we're going to do a back to back, two events one evening after the other, and then it looks like we're already looking into next year. So at some point I'll share the story about Carnegie Hall. I wanted to actually share something. Oh, I'll share something quickly. Um, and I want to ask you guys this. So I I want to ask you guys about a just. What's a distinction that totally, like, totally opened a lid on your life? That totally, like, once you knew this distinction existed, it changed everything. And I want to, I want to tell you the one distinction that kind of. Uh, so I live my life, wait, kind of tuning into distinctions, and um, so two came this year. So one of them actually came with Dr. Gail Randall. So I wanted to tell you about that, and I wanted to tell you about I met. Eric Morris, who I consider the world's greatest acting teacher, hands down. And he's, he, my daughter's a student of him, and we're, um, he's going to be 90. So the first time I ever called uh, Eric, he said a distinction to me, and the, and the title of his book is, one of his books, he has like 10, is No More Acting, Please. No More Acting, Please. So as soon as I realized that acting had nothing to do with acting, it had to do with conveying the 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 um the character the energy of the, the the person the like how do you convey and communicate the de- the depth of the feeling of that character and as soon as i knew that it was like it was like night and day and and uh so one of someone just said to me recently that they were in this conflict with another student in the acting class and this one of the students gave the other person the finger and eric just said wow now there's something to work with and i thought what a what a metaphor for speaking and something to work with there's something to work with here. Don't get discouraged. All right, so the other distinction I want to share that I experienced with Dr. Gail Randall that I'm actually teaching with her, I wanted to share this insight because um, a lot of times, you know, you don't always say to someone, I got that or you already said that to me. And cause we realize they didn't really get it. And then sometimes they say it again and you realize we're saying it again, but it's not a memory thing. It's something else. So I went to this passage with Gail. I wanted to tell you about it because I mentioned about brightening. And that's one of the experiences people would share when they, another of our team members, Dr. Andy Rosenfar, was saying to me that when people came around the world with serious eye conditions, the thing that they would report, because in the language of healing, what's the language of healing? By the way, this is what happens when you become a professional speaker. You get to talk about cool stuff and get paid. I just want to recommend it to you. So he was saying to me that, we had this meeting. It was me, Jesse McGuire, and uh, Andy. And we were diving into this next year of doing these, these one-of-a-kind shows on, on vibrant seeing. And another aspect of that is soul seeing. So when I first met Gail, and how I met Gail is a story, by the way. The story is called Miracle Down by the Dumpster. Miracle Down by the Dumpster is kind of when I, 
I confess. By the way, I, I just want to say to you guys, I know this is going to kind of you know stretch you, it will stretch you a little bit. Is I, I never met Dr. Gail Randall before, but I knew in my soul I needed to speak to her. I thought, well, she went to went to UCLA and she's a professor and she's a spiritual leader. I thought, yeah, this is someone. I didn't even realize at the, at that moment on a linear level that she was very close to one of the most treasured people in my life, Dr. Bowery Hill. She studied all the healers around the world. So. The first time I talked to Dr. Golan, I kind of made a confession, and part of my confession was, is I don't, I don't know where to go next. I have no idea. Um, this thing happened, and uh, so I wanted to share with you guys, because in my book, I, I have a chapter called Golden Feedback. I have a little, I kind of have a handbook for people who want to be uh, kind of spontaneous and be very uh, creative speakers and really lead the field in places like Carnegie Hall. So one of the things I talk about is the most of the feedback we get in life is so-so, annoying, uh, sometimes not useful. I'm kind of saying in this chapter that the golden feedback, where you kind of feel like you see another aspect of the sky, or you like, all this kind of, all of a sudden you realize, well, you've heard of walking, you walk, but really, if you walked in a way where you walk, you can feel your organ organs, you can feel this pulse of energy, because it's a miraculous thing walking, right? So what happened with Gail? Now, this is another distinction. I was going through a period of transition. I, on some level, I kind of felt I was going to have, I was going to go to this, I was going to have a, a different experience. And I went through this period of insecurity. And so having, what happened, I, what I developed with Dr. Randall, and this is in our course, uh, Healing Beyond Belief, I went through this period of time where Gail walked me through this great valley of doubt. And so my my valley of doubt was, that I had this sort of eye injury, inner eye injury, injury, and I I was so scared. It was kind of, I it was sort of hard, and I, I and I felt like I I felt like the, the divine brought us together. So there was a period of time where I would I get up in the morning, and I realized when you're having a fear response, when you're locked up, it's very hard to get out of it. It just ain't easy. So what happens is your perception comes, and then you think, oh my God, it's worsening. So I had this period of time where I'd get up in the morning and I would drive. And if something didn't look right, I would just freak me out. Because I, I realized that our whole life really is, our you could say, is how we see and how we brighten and how we bring brightening. And so I trusted Gail in a way that she was my, my deep sister during this passage. And so when she reminded me, she was never impatient with me. She stayed with me till the, till the, the click came. So the click was, oh my God, I'm actually in this, and I'm I'm close to this. I'm close to this, the healing source. It's in me, and I'm going to get through this. And it was like that. Then my nervous system, once the click occurred, my rest changed, and I went from like shaking to resting, which is really this process we go through. And you can't talk someone out of a process. You got to kind of be in this other quality of patience until they get the click. And of course, I was incredibly receptive. To Gail's click, and and she said it to me. One time she said it to me in a really funny way. I told her something, and she goes, "Well, your hair's not on fire." And I thought it was funny. It took my, it pulled my anxiety away. I thought, okay. <sighs> so I want to thank you. That was a, so that, a, a distinction. A healing distinction was that my eyesight was coming along in a way that I couldn't perceive. Like I couldn't perceive the process, but. What I what I got from you in that journey was that I could I could sort of rest in something that I wanted to rest in. I just didn't know how to feel into it. And so our conversations, our our clicking sessions, if you will, allowed me to kind of go to this other level. And so a distinction is something where you go beyond the known, and it's a beautiful thing when you trust someone enough who's not going to be like impatient or say like I've told you this before. They're going to say okay, let's just let's click here for a moment. Let's you know, so I want to say that was a huge distinction. I really feel a lot of our relationship has really been about that, really, and deepening. And uh, and so making a distinction in our lives is really what this other level of, of learning as a human being. It's kind of a whole other level of learning that sort of free your, the habitual memory. And it's a similar thing with, with Sherry. I, I had this, with, you know, with Sherry because I felt like, oh, yeah, Sherry really from the inside, she wants to impact the world with a different relation to dogs that's not out there. So I want to thank you. Happy New Year, Gail. I rings deeply. And so my, it's almost, I don't know, it's kind of like 
Moshe Feldenkrais, one of my teachers, he used to say, like, human beings don't, don't need body work. What human beings really need is um, they, need to rele- they need to kind of under- – they need to work with their brain in a way with the brain – because your your brain is a source of your movements in life, all your movements. So once you unlock the brain a little bit, your movements change. So that was uh, so learning distinctions. All right, Chair, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go. Right, actually, yeah, please comment, comment, please. Beautiful and enlightening, enlightened is you. You're enlightened and enlightened because you were basically. I was your healer. I was your shaman. I I stayed with you through the dark night of the soul. And you had someone struggling with you until you got it. You know, you had that shift in perspective, and that allows allowed the, the healing to come in. And you realized that it was a visionary change; that the change was not as physical as it was spiritual. It was a beautiful process. It still is. It's so. Uh, is it as more life? Is more brightening? I guess that whole idea of brightening. And I realized, like, when I was talking to Annie, I'll share this with you guys, because I had another another moment of, of, I don't know, relational intuition with the universe, really feeling like, oh, my God, when I heard Annie's name and I told Gail, I knew that this was someone I was going to, we are going to bring this message to another level. One of the things he said on the phone call that really struck me, and I'm gonna, this relates to brightening in relationship, is that, in the conventional world of a lot of eye doctors, they send people home with an eye death sentence. And so I knew I knew when I was on the call with, um, you know, Andy and Gail, Dr. Randall, I realized, yeah, I'm committed to sharing the things where people could, not just their vision could be has, and it's very specific in terms of lines on a on an eye board, you know, when you, when you go for eye tests, like the, people's physical vision change. But this idea that this, and Gail used to say it to me that part of what was happening was it was another, in some sense, the spiritual vision, which I was sort of in. But when you can have that kind of sacred conversation and see it with someone else, it's just a whole other, you know, it's sort of like, it kind of, it kind of blows my mind. It reminds me of a series that I did on dentistry before I met Dr. Saul Preston, who's out of this planet. He's out of this world. He does something called biomimetic dentistry. But one of the things I realized during the series is it's kind of amazing if you think about it. Dentists live in a sea of so much feedback that's profound, unusual. They work at, you know, they see the tongue. And yet, for a lot of dentists, they don't even notice what that really means. So, like, when I when I met uh, Saul, and he explained to me that most of the stuff they do that's very invasive is not holistic. Like, getting crowns and... and Getting all these things isn't isn't rebuilding teeth to your natural uh, you know bite. So distinctions, healing distinctions. So um, I just want to see. I want to go to you, Sherry. I want to go to you, Sherry. Okay. I want to go to you, Sherry. Because here you are, happy blessed New Year. I was so happy at I don't know twelve twelve fifteen. There Sherry was, and me. It was kind of like the one of the best ways to go to sleep was to see your text. And I was so happy because I had wanted to connect with you. And they, it kind of was a confirmation that the universe is a friendly place to be, which is Einstein said. He says when he get up in the morning, there's only one relevant question. Is the universe a friendly place to be? And I said, yes, Sherry, just text me. <laughs> in all the, the busyness of the, um, yes. the holiday season. And yeah. um, the kids were happy and, and family was happy. And I... Um, I reached out and wished you a happy, happy new year. So a blessed, amazing 2020 new yeah. year, yeah. new beginning. Yeah. So I'm excited. So and just I, what I want to be here and be healthy. So, yeah, no, mm-hmm. it's, uh, no, I, I was having some really strong, you know, so, okay. I want to share how I work with speakers a little bit. So what happens is I get a group of people who want to be speakers, vibrant speakers, and what they want to do is learn to speak without a script, and they want to learn how to, like, talk from a level that's uncommon. Because what happens the way a lot of people learn to speak is they get a script, and they kind of do the script, and they don't really convey a lot, a lot of times really is deep meaning for them. So, so what happens is they come, and I had this one woman come, and she'd written, she'd written, like, one of the first books early on about uh, kind of hot yoga and nutrition. 
And she said, oh, the people call me up sometimes and will say something like, I'm a really good speaker. And I go, really? And they said, yeah. And I said, okay. And she came. And, and she was a great speaker up until she got interrupted. So her name was Gina. So I said, you know, Gina, speaking, you got to be very strong. And part of being a vibrant speaker is I want you to take everything that interrupts you. So I asked her what the most, a thing that interrupted the most. And she said when someone walked by her when she was speaking. So I said, well, you know, I, I said, we're in a dojo right now. And I said, we're all, we're all here to kind of, you know, be humbled and discover our message. Because a lot of times, you know, we get invalidated early on. You know, the teacher, the teacher doesn't call on you. A whole bunch of stuff happens. That's why people are so terrified of speaking, because it's like it puts you really vulnerable if, you, if you're a vibrant speaker. So I had people practice doing everything that annoyed her. So we had people walking in front of her. And, and, I, and people wanted, and I had people walking in front of her. We had people bringing noisemakers. And so the first three months uh, of the Byron Speakers, you know, dojo, is people go through all these. So they, they, if they start by saying they're a really good speaker. Usually in the second month, they go, well, I didn't have a clue what speaking was. And, now, and then they'd be like, now I know why people have scripts, because they can rely on a script. And I said, well, part of the purpose of Byron Speaking is that you rely on your intuition and your intelligence and the group. So imagine when you're speaking, if you could tune into the group in a way where the group kind of gives you the direction of the talk. And this is for a lot of speakers. They don't even realize that's a possibility. So we, we'd practice it. We practice all the things. Uh, like, for instance, another pet peeve was that people have, is they get in, introduced in an incorrect way. Someone messes up their book title. Uh, they mess up their last name. Very common. And so we have other people practice that. Now, the other thing is that this is really interesting is introduction. So let's say, Sherry, I would introduce you by saying, you know, that it was one of the most significant turning points in my life, meeting Sherry, because meeting Sherry meant that I could actually bring a message forward that really I wanted to share. It was, the message was that I, I met this Rottweiler. I met a psychiatrist who gave me a Rottweiler. He called me up one day. He used to call me Boober, and Boober's for Martin Boober, the, the Jewish mystic. And he said, Boober, he goes, you need to come up and get this Rottweiler because if you have this Rottweiler, it's going to clear out things in your energy and your grid. So he studied, so he, he developed this thing called the grid work because he said all these illnesses like Gulgaris disease and uh, Parkinson's, see, people are stuck in this thing in the grid. And so he said that the Rottweiler, because it deals with life and death issues, I'm saying this is Sherry, and she's listening, and she's sort of mirroring this back to me, and I'm like, wow, I'm at home with Sherry in this message. And then I start, and then what happens, how I work with people, clients, is I kind of I kind of have imagery come to me, and then I thought, oh, yeah, this could be a book. And and Sherry, you can, you always gave me really good feedback. I always love what you shared with me. And you referenced Ben. And tonight, if you're available at 7 p.m., we're going to meet with this woman who works with the White Swiss Shepherd. Because she said to me the other night that she's going to find me the right White Swiss Shepherd. And she, she you know, so she said that, um, I want to say the first conversation we had, I thought about you, Sherry. Because the first thing she said about the White Swiss Shepherd is, is that when she was around them as a breeder, it was the first dog when she was around them. She says, she says, oh, my God, these dogs are old souls. And it was like, I think I can relate to that. And then we talked about some other things. And uh, um, so working with spe working with speakers is incredible. You know, the thing that I learned with working with speakers is what I call the release phenomena. The release phenomena, I just went through it the other day with a relative. The release phenomena where you realize things are different than you thought they were, and it seems disorienting, frightening, and disturbing. So if you think you're a really good speaker, and then you realize, well, you you know, there's another whole level. The beautiful thing is when you're with a group of people, I have amazing groups, wonderful people come. My vision for Carnegie Hall is we access this park. It's called Roosevelt Park, and we all walk and, and do these practices together. Now, I want to say today we have a, an exercise that Sherry's going to share with us. I wanted to do a little bit of introduction. I know it went on a second. <laughs> but I... <laughs> All right, so these exercises are practical, mystical exercises where you can feel more of your dog's spirit. Your dog has a spirit and a vibe, you know that. It's hard to articulate. The part of why your dog's so healing is that your dog takes you beyond language and brings you to another language. And the dog mystic is educating you in the practical ways uh, and intuitive ways 
where you can have this relationship with your dog where you're not in this place of like yelling and being disturbed and trying to force your dog, which doesn't work. So what's our actually what exercise are we going to share with people today, Sherry? And then Lisa and uh, and Dr. Randall could jump in too. I want to make sure they catch the exercise deeply in our our 70 million listeners as well. <laughs> Um, okay, so <laughs> um, first I just want to um, to let everybody know that I, I learned something new just recently that is pretty amazing. Um, and, you know, some dogs do it and some dogs don't. So when um, – and this is, this is just uh, okay. the, the, the moment of being – like, you know, just being in the moment and being present with your dog and observing what, what they're doing. Because there's some dogs, when they go to the bathroom, they just, you know, they walk, they smell, and then, you know, they just go to the bathroom. No problem. Yeah. And then yeah. there's other dogs where they – they turn and they turn and they turn and they're they're turning so many times it's almost impossible to, like hey it's it's absolutely amazing that like they're not um they're not dizzy you know but um, <laughs> what i found is some of the dogs turn just because hang on give us a lap break trying... give us give us a lap break go on, sorry yeah. um <laughs> We all need to laugh, you know. But um, <laughs> they are trying to pick the perfect yeah. spot that's yeah. in, in alignment with the magnetic field. So, wow. um, huh. so they they're, they're huh. turning and turning and turning, and they find yeah. the perfect spot because of of the um, of that that feeling. And so I was like, all right, well, is this this is just a fun fact that I saw and like, you know, that I posted on, on Facebook and I was like, okay, this is very interesting. So then of course I had to, uh, I had to research it. So um, there was a study that was done um, <clears throat> back in 2014 and they, let's see, um, they examined 70 dogs made up of 37 breeds over two years. And this is just, this is science. This is what, like, working with animals, not only dogs, but just science in general is, is the, the patience of, of observation and being in that present moment. So what they did was they, um, <laughs> they researched um, out, of, out of these 70 dogs, 1,893 defecations and 5,583 urinations. And... <laughs> The researchers found yeah, that under yeah. calm, calm magnetic field, so no, um, you know, no earthquakes, just on the yeah. everyday, everyday yeah. basis. Um, the dogs preferred to excrete with the body being aligned along the north-south axis and totally avoiding east-west altogether, and um, they were absorbed in a free roaming environment, meaning they were not leased and not influenced by walls, roads, and that would influence any kind of linear movement. They're not exactly sure why they chose north and west, uh, no, yeah. not north and south instead of east and west, but I think that's absolutely amazing because, I mean, that's, that's just proof that the dogs are so in tune with with the world and their environment and the the feelings and they have that sixth sense. So mm -hmm. um I thought that was just absolutely amazing just to that is amazing. <laughs> it is. All right, we're gonna we're gonna go back we're gonna move forward with the amazing. Uh stay with us. Why don't you guys exhale a few times? I can exhale. I love that. So the dog has a sense of this click. I talked about my relationship with Gail, the click. All right, the mm -hmm. click needs to be in tune. Stay with us. We've got more, more vibrant living and more vibrancy mm -hmm. now. <laughs> the Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. 
Kathy Williams, host of Sexy Mom Abundant Life radio show on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific. On the show, we explore living abundantly in every area of your life. Ways to let go of limiting patterns and beliefs and to step into the flow of creativity and possibility, knowing you are supported by the universe. Opiates has taken everything and everyone I've ever loved away from me. Everything. I blew my ankle out and I got prescribed pain pills by my doctor. If making my detox public is going to help somebody, I'm all for it. So I just wish I would have had a warning. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth. Spread the truth. A message from Truth, the Ad Council, and ONDCP. I just paused. I realized I, I. Welcome to Vibrant Living. Welcome. The dog missed us. This the dog missed us. Been sharing some uh, relevant, primal, intuitive, instinctive stuff. Dr. Gail Randall. I was talking about the click that I experienced with Dr. Gail Randall. So the click. Lisa, Lisa LaRose. She's around a few dogs now and again. Maybe like twenty of them. Um, <laughs> all right. So I meet this guy Sherry and Gail and Lisa. I meet him, and he's written this book. It's the most beautiful book I've ever seen. It's a gorgeous book. It's called To Be Healed by the Earth. And he goes to Brazil, and he gets a parasite. He's a psychologist. So he gets this parasite. And I guess I just think it's 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 not an easy parasite to... And so all he does is he goes to lay on the earth, I guess about six to eight hours a day. And then when he's laying there, he starts to see these colors around the trees. And then he realizes he never saw those colors before. And then it impacted his whole way of working with people because he realized when he, when people would come to his office, he never saw colors. But then after being laying on the earth six months, and we did some sessions together. So what I find interesting is that that's interesting what you're saying. Now I can remember my Rottweiler, by the way. So my Rottweiler, when he went to – you know, go to do his business, he would kind of run. It was really hard for him to be settled. And so I never thought, that's sort of interesting. So I thought, well, it was a nervous habit. But maybe you're saying that these dogs, if I catch the story, that, that there's a purpose of their relationship with, with uh, what did you call it? What is, what, what's the, are they in tune with when they're turning around? What's their purpose there? They're moving. Um, well, I mean, it's, it's more or less just their their sixth sense and the the oh, sixth mean. Okay. sense okay. of the the magnetic okay. field in the okay. um, in the ley lines. So okay. I mean, like you know, it's it. But for whatever reason, it's on a north south direction instead of an east west. Yeah. I'm gonna in a moment. I'm gonna share Sherry's our vision for Sherry over the next year. I'm going to share that with you guys. We're, t- we're putting a, an event together in Great Barrington, Massachusetts, with the Dog Mystic in conjunction with Great Mountain Ma- uh, Great Mountain uh, Mountain Dog Magazine with Melissa. We're having Sherry give a seminar at Dave's Pet Food City. Dave has his own private brand, and he's kind of we've been working together with him. We're going to start writing the book, and what we're going to do in relation to this book, the Dog Mystic book. And then I'm going to share you the million dollar question of the day here. It's going to be a powerful question. Um, yeah, it's going to be. So my question, I'm going to give you a pre- the question is going to be is how do we let our dog heal us? And I think part of that answer is is going to be very different for different people. But I wanted to ask Sherry because I've always asked Sherry about these remarkable um, sort of rescue dogs, and I'm just curious to get more insight because sometimes. There was a story I heard recently, and then I'm going to outline the rest of Sherry's year. I promise. I'm going to get right back to that. I, I heard a story recently, and I happen to like this particular breed of dog. It's called a Swiss a Swiss Shepherd. Is there a missing? Or is it a Swiss? Oh, it's a Swiss White Shepherd. It's a Swiss White Shepherd. So um, I heard a story that made me think about Sherry. And the story was that this guy had ordered a dog from Argentina. And he was a very affluent guy, so he ordered this dog. And he had the dog trained in Argentina, sent to Florida, 
And then when it got to Florida, I guess he either he didn't see pictures of, of a white Swiss shepherd before or um, he just didn't get it. And so when, he, when the dog came, he was scared of the dog. So his solution, and this is where crazy people, crazy dogs, and part of Sherry's mission is to help you guys develop your own mystical sense, your own intuitive sense, by being receptive to this intrinsic wisdom in the dog. And that's what I want to, want to get into now with Sherry. So anyway, when the White Swiss Shepherd came, this guy came up with a, a crazy person solution. This is crazy. So the crazy solution he came up with is that he would get the dog retrained, and if that didn't work, he would have the dog euthanized. And I thought to myself, this is an affluent guy in Florida, and I thought to myself, like, what is this disconnection, uh, you know, between animals or dogs and humans? And so part of my mission with Sherry is to be able to have this um, other education, because it's not just about yelling at your dog, sit down or shut up. It's really about realizing the dog's contribution to you. So my question on this segment, Sherry, as the dog mystic, and particularly that Dr. Randall said a few weeks ago that three Rottweilers helped us, I guess she's near 100 years old, one of Dr. Randall's patients, is the Rottweil, each Rottweil healed a different disease. What, if someone's listening right now and they go, oh, this is a dog mystic, because this is a dog mystic question. A lot of people want to get dogs, and part of why they want to get dogs, they would use words like companionship, they would use words like, uh, I wonder if some people would you'd use the word healing, or some people would say it's an emotional uh, support dog. What would you say upon getting a a, a dog for a new a new uh, you know a new person to having a dog? What are the most relevant things of beginning to to bond with the dog? So, for instance, the dog that I'm getting, for, and I'll introduce introduce you guys to Donna, who breeds these white Swiss shepherds. She's going to find me an older dog. And she said, well, it might take a while for you to bond with the dog. And I've been pondering this. What makes a difference when we get a dog, particularly a dog uh, like a rescue, that's a year old or a year and a half, what makes a difference in that early stage of the bond, of the connection, of the, of the deep? Uh, and how do we become well, receptive to that bond? That's where that's where being yeah. in the moment, being present in the moment. And, and as many times as you have asked me, um, way over a hundred times, I'm sure. Well, um, I'm really embarrassed now. I'm leaving the studio. I'm leaving the studio. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll take over because no, that's no, what she does. But I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 you, you've asked me about the breeds and what about this breed and what about yes, that breed. Yes, I love yes, all yes, yes, breeds. Yes, I don't, I don't yes. discriminate on the breed, but I mean, it's, yes. the most important thing is, especially yeah. if you're going to rescue. Yes. Is you need to have that that bond. You have to have that that like you you just know like just from an eye eye from from the the eye movement and just you when your eyes lock on to a certain dog that you know it, it's almost like you just it's that amazing energy and and uh, all around that is is putting you guys together and i mean of, of course it doesn't always happen that way but i mean like you know there that's that's what you that's what what all people if you're going to rescue first like research the breeds there's so many different breeds of dogs but research breeds that would be good for you or good for your family so you know exactly like what to look for before you go to a humane society or you go to a rescue or like take the time to actually go on online and um and look at the pictures because i'm eating even from the pictures from the pictures or the descriptions of the people that are are uh, fostering the dog or you know the people that are taking care of the rescues they know they they they've been with that dog so then like you know you, just from just from the picture and then going to meet the dog i mean like you know even even if the dog is totally petrified um there's still something in in their eyes like i i i definitely think it's it's definitely like an eye um you know when when you meet somebody eye to eye or like, yes. you know, just that, that connection. Yes. You know, you want to find that connection that's just like, that you can just grow and, and heal each other, especially with, with rescues. There's too many rescues that, rescue dogs that are just so, so grateful to be given the affection 
and they need the healing just as much as, as the person needs the healing, you know? So, um, I agree. I was just going to, I was just going to ask you, I was just going to ask you. You were going to ask me? Yes. I was just thinking, I was just thinking of two things, Lisa. One was, I almost feel like Sherry, you know, Sherry's line to me is sort of humorous because it was like, how many times are you going to ask her out? And I'm thinking until we go out. No, but I think the thing was about the dogs. So thank you, Sherry. Uh, thank you. So I think I started to say, and I think I've said this to you, Lisa, I, I would say that Sherry would say to me that. And I, I started repeating it back to her. I said, well, Gail as well. Well, until the dog picks me. This is the dog I'm currently wildly off the charts enthusiastic about. So I started to mirror her back to herself. So this next year, like when we were both seniors in high school, and I said, hey, Sherry, before you go to class, what about a Malamute? And then she would say, well, the right dog's going to come to you. I started to repeat the line back to her, and that's how we bonded. And then we graduated high school together, and that was it. Right, right, Sherry? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know yeah. Understood. when uh, part of, I think, any journey, whether it be a healing journey or, or choosing a companion, is really about surrender. And I know mm-hmm. both Sherry and Dr. Gale mm. would echo this. You know, a, a friend of mine, I had a conversation with him. He was feeling, you know, he was saying, in, you know, a few years ago, he was feeling so overwhelmed by all of these different things, a divorce and you know, almost losing his home and, you know, all these things. And he said he laid down on the, on the floor of this house and he just surrendered and he let mm-hmm. whatever was meant to unfold, unfold. Mm-hmm. And, he, and he got peace. And, um, you know, and, I'm, and, you know, I'd love to hear both Sherry and, and Dr. Gale comment about that, that when you mm-hmm. – take a breath and uh, allow whomever it is, whether it be a companion animal or a person to come to your, to your rescue, um, what that, what that looks like. Would either one of you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, to me, the first thing in order to heal that a person needs to do is, is trust, you know, trust what's going on, trust their process, trust their healer, but then also be willing to let go of the stuff that's blocking it. And when you said he, mm-hmm. he surrendered mm-hmm. and let go, mm-hmm. that clears the way. That that shifts the perspective, you know, 180 degrees or whatever and makes an opening mm-hmm. for the light to come in, if you will. But you've got to let go of the stuff that's blocking it first. And, and that may be your own stuff. That may be stuff that was put on you from before. May be wounds. Maybe a lot of stuff. But whatever. If you surrender, you're giving it over to something bigger than you. Mm-hmm. And then you can heal. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, very beautiful. And it's very true. It, it's just like the the surrendering and allowing. So you're surrendering to you have no clue what's gonna happen and 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 you're open for um, open for the help and healing and then you're allowing all the all the feelings to um, to go through and and to be processed instead of being mm-hmm. stuck in in the body and in the mind. So that's the beautiful thing about surrendering. Yeah. And finally, and you like, can end up with the best dog go. ever that way, too. <laughs> yes. Unexpectedly, <laughs> you know? So, you well, know, I think what it was. That would be the, yeah, for you, Glenn, yeah, you know, yeah, when you, yeah. whenever you, whatever the dog is, you know, yeah, and you'll meet yeah, them yeah. and you surrender yeah. to that, that moment. So, in the same way that you, allowed uh, Dr. Randall, you know, to be the captain of your healing ship. Yeah, yeah. Right? Well, she was wearing a sailor's uh, cap. That kind of helped. <laughs> no, actually, no, no. She sent me. She sent me an email. She sent me a text, and it was such a beautiful text. She said, "I want to be the ca- uh, the captain." And she, I, the way she said, it, "I love." She said, "She goes." She was like, "Don't think about it. Just say yes." And I called her up, and I said, "Yes." So it was a yes. It was a yes. Um, <laughs> See, so uh, surrendering to just say yes. yes. 
Like, yes, um, yes, okay, fine. Uh, yes, 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 this is yes, I mean. yes. Oh yeah, <laughs> I no, what I can't. Happen. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Well, the, it was a sort of yes that I could be tortured, you know, in a sense by my own mind. I, I, all right, so I want to share with you guys the passage when I was speaking to Donna the breeder. Okay, so we have this exchange, and one thing she says to me is, <laughs> one thing she says to me, hey. What the, I'm all my, I'm all my admirer. Yeah, I used, to, I, I used to go to places to do live shows, and people would come up, and I had people who came regularly, and I lo- I'm so psyched to see everybody. Our upcoming events, we got an event coming up in Vermont. I love you guys. By the end of January, I got some events where we can meet each other in person. So, um, okay, so Don is a dog breeder for the last, four, I think it's 37 years. So Lisa and and uh, and Dr. Randall and Sherry, she says to me this one line. She says, well. Um, she goes, I'm going to find you this dog, and I'm going to be totally patient. And she goes, when people come here, she goes, no matter how much money they have, she goes, I've turned down a lot of people that just have a lot of money because I don't want to give the dog to someone who's not in residence with the dog. And what she said to me about the white Swiss Shepherd, and she talked about these dogs are like old souls. And I was thinking, yeah, I'd like a dog that's an old soul. And So I was sort of listening to Sherry in the sense that I wanted this to be very personal, and it, it wasn't coming in a, a, a linear way. I was sort of, because um, I really had a connection with. So what, she, what Sherry said about the dog is that when the dog, when you meet the dog, I, I could see there's another whole level. It's hard to necessarily figure that out or kind of, um, so I'm, I'm very reverent of the process. I love that. We, by the way, so this last week, the topic of the week that I've had with my clients, and it is a book called The Surrendered Wife. And what the book's talking about is how, what she learned in her marriage through surrendering. And then I met Catherine, who was on last week, and she's in a program. And she was saying being a surrendered woman has opened up a whole new world for her of a feminine power that's uncommon. And so she talked about becoming a priestess in this other way to receive. So we don't usually think of power of acquiring it through surrender. So Lisa, that was such a... So surrender... So when you look at the, if you will, the masculine and the feminine, and you could transfer this to the dog world, because sometimes the dogs come in, like the Rottweiler, and uh, I'm mentioning the Rottweiler because that was my own experience, and there's a fearsome energy, and we surrender it and go past our intellect. So an obstacle to healing is overthinking, right? And over, when you overthink, it's hard to receive the feel of healing that's happening, the feel of healing. And so that word surrender, and surrender, by the way, is not collapse. So one of the things when I would do my sessions with Gail, I wasn't collapsing. I was surrendering, and then I was, if you, if you, it's kind of like this. I was dropping into the earth. Now, when you, drop, when you walk, there's a rebound from the earth. So when you walk, right, if you really notice it, there's this rebound, but it's not as if you're collapsing. So surrender is not cla- collapsing. It's like allowing. It's giving up. It's distinction. not giving up, right? That is right, right. Exactly. Share the distinction. As a matter of fact, it's it's the opposite of giving up. It's just like letting go of that stuff that's not serving you, that's in the way. Yes. So that you can it's not giving up and surrendering to a thing bigger than you. Uh, I love it. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it's, it's so, also like the um, the the lady alley that was that was on uh, two weeks ago with, with her, yes. her brain in, injury. So she wasn't yes. giving up and she wasn't allowing the, her doctor's diagnosis to, um, to be, be what her life was going to be. So right. she surrendered to the healing that she, I mean, that she was searching for, right? you know, and, and that's, that's the beautiful thing. Yeah. Not giving up and knowing that you're going to be be healed. So when I when I trail when I hang out with Sherry, I want to ask you guys about this. So there's a mind that Sherry has. It's her mystical mind. So what she said to me was early on is that when she would go to a, the dog's house, the dog owner's house, that the dogs who respond to her very different than the owners. Where they would be around the owners. And I thought when I'm around Sherry, I want to catch that. I want to deepen that in myself. Because I'm always curious the the alchemy the alchemy effect we have on something, and so Sherry, so Sherry, share share a story. What happens when you go to the house and it's let's say it's a dog that the owners call violent? Like, what? Give us a feeling of your breath and pulse because we didn't give the exercise, but let's use this as an opportunity 
of maybe sharing, how do you find deep tuneness with a dog that seems like the behavior is kind of cuckoo? Oh, that's how the owners would describe it. How do you, is this something that is so, do you, give us a practice that you use. I'm sure it's very natural. Give us a practice that you use when you meet a, a dog that seems on edge. Um, well, I mean, um, I guess it's, it's, it's just my, um, <laughs> I guess it's just my, my calmness or my energy or my, my calming energy that, that, um, that I guess fills the room where, when, when I get, get in and like walk into the house. So the dogs actually like, you know, feel feel my energy because they have have a sixth sense but i mean like you know the the important thing for any any dog that is reactive in any kind of aggression is to make sure that the dog is is on the leash and um so it's it's making sure that the dog is on on the leash and seeing exactly what the reaction of the reaction the dog is giving to me um, whether it's aggression and what kind of aggression, and then um, and then then also even if um, even if I I do feel fear, then mm-hmm, yes, it's it's only on the inside. There's no my my body language is yes. more or less just portraying calmness i mean like the and and <laughs> it's it's funny because um this i'll just say this real quick because um i guess my my reaction especially with with my boyfriend on like you know if we get into a heated conversation i'm still so like so calm and i i actually just just realize this because I've been training for, you know, I've been, I've been a dog facilitator. I <laughs> like that, that word. I mean, I've been a dog facilitator slash trainer <laughs> for 19 years. So within these 19 years, I guess, because I have to stay calm in, in many situations, you know, especially with, with um, aggressive dogs or, or um, reactive dogs that it has trickled over into my um into my everyday life where the calmness that I portray is is just felt um felt all around. So I mean like you know I and I didn't I didn't even realize it. But I mean I, I did realize it just from um <laughs> just from the um the conversations there, you know? Um so I mean, like you know, it's, it's it, even if you're you're nervous inside and your heart is racing, it's it's not showing them um, ten- body tension, and your body language is so extremely important because the dogs can pick up on on that body language in one second, you know. And I mean, like you know, the the main thing, and I'll give you a quick uh, exercise also. So okay, your dog, your dog trusts you to feed him, pet him. Or her, um, play with them and treat them well. In return, they give you their undying, undying devotion, love, and protection. Their heart and souls are yours. So once you find that connection, and once you find that that dog that you're actually like, and I mean like you know, if you're looking for a dog, if you're going to rescue a dog, then don't don't rush into it. And I, I love the, Glenn. I love the fact that you're you're not rushing into it. But I mean, you know that that's why it's just you're gonna find that perfect dog. But it's it's that's why it's just so important to take your time. But go and look at the dogs and meet the dogs and see and like have that feel, have that bond, and, and you know just and that I that eye to eye connection that you're you know that's the the perfect dog dog um, for you. So I mean, like you know, um, yeah. Twenty twenty seconds. To give an exercise because I don't want to. I don't want to have that music come on as much as we all love the music. Just kidding. <laughs> so what? So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so Go and give the exercise. Un- yeah. Um, their undying devotion, love, and protection. Yes. Their yeah. Heart and souls yeah. Are yours. That's their their gift to to you. And your gift to them is to just totally cherish cherish them. 
cherish them and and cherish the the beautiful beautiful time that that you have. Um, so now it's, t- it's time to show some puppy love for the people in your life who deserve also deserve your affection. Aww. Do something special for each person, tailored to fit his or her wishes and desires, and just make it about them. You know, and and but but you know, show show the puppy love and show the love to the people that you 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 love and and really care and cherish around you, but also do it for yourself. Show yourself the same love you showed others. Do some things that you've been wanting to do for the longest time, but never found the time, or just indulge, indulge and. and and enjoy 2020 as a new year, new beginnings, and and also give yourself the love. You know, uh, uh, thank you. By the way, th- thank thank you, thank you. I want to say that we're going to feature some national authors to endorse Sherry's book, and one of them is I don't. I need to track him down. He wrote a book called "Your Dog's Not Sick." He want he just wants you to think so. Your dog's not sick. And one of the things he says in the book, when the woman comes in and says, "My dog jumps up on this one woman at the party," and you know, smell, sniffs her groin, and he's he's horrible with her. The psychiatrist, uh, the, the veterinarian said, do you like this woman? And she said, no, not at all. She said, the dog's taking your lead. It's our dog reflect us, too. All right, have a blessed day. Thank you guys deeply. Your life's precious. Enjoy it. Thank, Thank you. Guys. Have a deeply. Day. Thank you, Chris. Love you guys. Wonderful.